In this video, I'll cover the Blend tool. Blends are used to transition from one object to another, including transitions between colors, shapes, and other properties. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also view a written version of this tutorial. The Blend tool is part of the Effects tool group. This set of tools can be found toward the lower end of the toolbox and can be opened by clicking the small arrow in the lower right corner of whatever icon is displayed. The Blend icon is the third one from the top. There is also a Blend Docker or Blend Inspector on the Mac, which can be opened by choosing Window, Dockers, Effects, Blend. The options here are the same ones that appear on the property bar when creating or editing a blend. In this example, I have a rectangle and a star with different fill colors, outline colors, and outline widths. The Blend tool is active, and when the cursor is over an object that can be blended, it has a blend symbol. I'll drag between the two objects, and the blend preview is indicated by blue outlines. When I release the mouse button, the blend is created. This blend consists of 20 evenly spaced shapes that transition from rectangle to star and whose fill colors, outline colors, and outline widths also transition. Note that color blends can be created for objects with uniform or fountain fills, but not for bitmap, texture, or vector fills. Start and end objects are marked with white squares and are referred to as control objects. The arrow points to the end control object. Either control object can be dragged to a new spot, which updates the blend. In the property bar or on the docker, I can change the number of blend objects, add a twisting angle and make the path a loop to match the angle, and change the color blend from direct to clockwise along the color wheel or counterclockwise. I can click the object and color acceleration icon to adjust the rates of change for object shape and color, either together or separately when I turn off the lock icon. I can also adjust change rates on the blend itself. Each triangle can be dragged separately to adjust color change or shape change rates, and double clicking either triangle brings the two triangles back together. Double clicking on either locked triangle would unlock them again. The star in this example is the end control object because it was drawn more recently. To check this, I can click the Starting and Ending Objects icon, where I can choose Show Start to see which object came first, which is the rectangle in this case. This option switches temporarily to the Pick tool, with the rectangle selected. If I make a change to this control object, such as to its outline width or to its fill color by clicking a color swatch, the blend adjusts accordingly. Pressing the spacebar returns to the previous tool, which was Blend, and I'll click the blend to continue editing it. To reverse the blend so that the rectangle is on top, I'll choose Object, Order, Reverse Order. Any changes to the shape of either start or end object will also affect the blend. I'll click the Shape tool, which is just below the Pick tool, click the rectangle, and drag any corner node to round the corners, which changes the transitional shapes. In this example, I'll blend between the two hearts, but instead of clicking and dragging directly, I'll keep the Alt key pressed while dragging and draw a freehand curve for the transition. To set an even spacing by distance, I'll click Blend Spacing and specify the spacing distance for more or fewer objects. To blend along a different path, specifically this curve drawn with the Pen tool, I can either click the Path Properties icon and choose New Path, or right-click anywhere in the blend and choose New Path. Clicking the curve brings the objects to that path, and to make the objects fit the entire curve, I'll click the More Blend Options icon and choose Blend Along Full Path. The Rotate All Objects option in the same dropdown keeps each heart perpendicular to the path. If I want to match the blend properties of the hearts to another blend between other objects, I'll first create a freehand blend between them, then click Copy Blend Properties and click inside the blend I want to copy. The Blend tool is commonly used for adding 3D effects to objects. In this example, I'm creating a tunneling effect between two rectangles with no fill, a gleaming or reflective effect from an ellipse with a fountain fill, and a 3D text effect. Blending works nicely with open curves as well. 
I'll blend between the line and spiral, switch to counterclockwise color blend, and increase the number of objects. With the shape tool, I can move endpoints of the line to change the result. To blend the line with the curve instead of the spiral, I'll return to the blend tool, right click on the blend, choose new end, and click the curve. Now I can use the shape tool to modify both the line and the curve. Node mapping can be used to twist transition objects. While editing this blend, I'll click More Blend Options and choose Map Nodes. I'll click this node on the end shape and match it to this node on the start shape. A compound blend is a joined set of two or more blends. In this example, I'll blend from the square to the triangle, the triangle to the circle, and back to the square. Moving or changing a shared control object affects two sections of the compound blend. To add another section, I'll click the longer blend, then click More Blend Options and choose Split. Where I click now becomes a new control object, and I now have four blend sections. Removing blend sections can be done by fusing. I'll select the section on the right, whose end control object is at the top. When I click More Blend Options and choose Fuse End, that control object is removed and the two sections are fused into a single blend section. If I undo and choose Fuse Start instead, the control object at the bottom is removed. Finally, only one object can be used for either end of a blend, but I can get around this by using a group. With the Pick tool, I'll hold the Shift key while selecting these three shapes, then click the Group Objects icon. Now I'll create a linear blend, which has the appearance of a compound blend, right-click and choose the curve as the new path, and extend the blend along the full path. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on the Blend tool in Corel Draw. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also find a written version of this tutorial.